My name is Chad Bettis, author of The Disciple Making Parent, and this is my audio blog, where I read some of my blog posts in audio format for your convenience. Well, in today's episode, we're going to be thinking about two simple images for your marriage. You know, a solid marriage is essential to display the gospel to the watching world and to our children. And yet it seems like it's never been harder. There are many false ideas, images, expectations, and beliefs that seduce both the young and the old. Sharon and I recently led a young marriage group, and in that I brought up two simple classic images that picture vital concepts to building a strong and healthy marriage. They're not original with me, and they've been around for decades, but they're classic because they hold important truths. First is the three-legged race. Though it seems to have fallen out of favor, the three-legged race was, was an essential picnic activity of 25 years ago. And you know how it goes. Two people would belt their inside legs together and compete against others by sprinting to the finish line. Communication and coordination were essential. Those who fell provided entertainment for the spectators. Well, in a similar way, the Bible's most oft-repeated verse about marriage tells us that a man and a woman leave their parents, cleave together, and begin the process of becoming one flesh. There are two people who are and are becoming one flesh as they cleave together. Two who are one. This means there needs to be communication and coordination in this new union. It also means there needs to be care for the other since they're joined together. Two people are meant to finish the race together. And unlike our analogy, marriage is not a race against others. But it's a marathon before the Lord. We're in it for the long haul. We travel together. When applied to marriage, this picture makes it clear that the person we most need to love and encourage is this person attached to us. Friends may come and go. Work will have its ups and downs. But I've attached myself to this person. He or she need my encouragement and love. They cannot carry all the weight of the relationship. We are in this together. Another implication is realizing deeply how what I do impacts the other. You know, sin makes us self-absorbed. And so many times we don't realize the impact our actions have on our life partner, but they do. And so mistakes we make, illnesses we endure, debilitations that happen to us all affect the other party. And while this may be part of the, you know, better or worse part of marriage, it still can be wearying to absorb the other person's changes. Unless the Lord divinely ordains extraordinary suffering, no person wants to carry the other person for the endurance of the race. Even a, quote, I know this decision has impacted you, thanks for working on this together, can really soothe the relationship. In summary, this picture helps us realize that we're one, needing communication, And that what happens to one affects the other, and both need to give to the other. But this is not the whole truth. There's a second truth that lives in tension with this truth. And that brings us to the illustration of the triangle. Another simple and familiar picture for thinking about marriage is the triangle. At the apex of the triangle is the Lord. And at the bottom two corners are each person in the marriage. And often this image is used to encourage the about-to-be-married to to grow closer to the Lord and thus establish the marriage. And, And that's certainly a very helpful picture. But in this picture, we have something else. If one only looked at three-legged race analogy, then one would become discouraged if the marriage is struggling, or one could idolize the marriage or the partner. So you see, the previous illustration focuses on the whole. But the picture of the triangle, however, reminds me that I'm to seek to grow like Christ no matter what the other party does. God has given marriage for our holiness and our happiness. Marriage is not eternal. 
It's for this life only. And on the judgment day, I will stand before the Lord as an individual. So that means I should pursue loving the Lord, loving my spouse, and growing to be like Jesus through hard times, no matter what the other party does. I can move up that triangle of holiness towards the Lord, whether my spouse is moving up, stagnant, or even moving away from the Lord. In addition, the triangle reminds me that Jesus, not my spouse, is my Savior. I think too many men and women functionally make their spouse their Savior. We expect them to provide love and acceptance and control of circumstances and internal healing and delivery from suffering. And only Jesus can provide those things. There's only one Savior, and your husband or wife is not him. Well, let's ask some application questions. How might these truths apply? Here are a few questions. Do I realize that my actions affect my spouse, my moods, my debilitations, my decisions? Am I thankful for the grace that comes from the other? Do I need to be more considerate? Number two, am I allowing enough time to communicate about the direction our race should take us? Or are we moving too fast and regularly falling? Number three, is the person I'm tied to my priority to build up and encourage? Or functionally have others become first? Number four, am I idolizing my marriage or my spouse and ignoring my own walk with the Lord? Can I disconnect my walk with the Lord from theirs? And number five, am I repenting of my sin and letting the trials of marriage make me more holy no matter what my spouse does? Well, these simple pictures are also profound. The first points me to how the whole displays the gospel. The second reminds me of my individual responsibility to grow towards him and the other. This episode came from a blog post on the website, The Disciple Making Parent. And my heart is to help parents live out the gospel in the home and specifically pass the gospel to their children so that they will follow the Lord as adults. To find out more information about how we can pass the gospel to our kids, visit thediscipleMakingParent.com. I'm Chad Bettis. Thanks for listening.